Ho ho ho! My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Claws. Merry Christmas everybody. But Claws is a movie that's absolutely beloved by everyone now. Like it's on the best 250 movies list which is just insane to me. And for 2019 everybody's like this is a movie that should win best animated picture and I wouldn't go that far. It should have been How to Train Your Dragon 3. That movie got completely snubbed. But I'm perfectly okay with Toy Story 4 winning because that movie is actually amazing. But uh, Claws is still a really good movie and I would have been happy if it won. This movie does lots of things really well. Like the way it breaks down the myths of Santa Claus is just very fascinating. It actually feels like something we've never seen done in a movie before. You know, you understand how each part of the story came to be. Where the reindeer came from, from him flying at night, to the cookies and milk, to the naughty or nice list. You just get a firm understanding of all of that and it just has this magical quality to it. Not because of what you're seeing is magical, but because you relate to the kids and what they're feeling is this pure sense of magic. And I just think the movie does an exceptional job at that. This movie is genuinely moving and heartfelt when it tries to be. And I was surprised by the emotional depths on display. The relationship between Jasper and Mr. Claus is given plenty of depth and you do really care for these two. And when you find out the backstory of Klaus, it, it's, it is really effective. And I think it's an absolute shame that it takes a movie about a half hour to get to that point. Because the first half hour of this movie is pretty insufferable. It just plays out like you'd imagine any other kid's movie to play out. It introduces the characters in a way that makes them feel like cliches and nothing more. It introduces the story in a way that makes it feel cliche and nothing more. And yes, this entire movie is made for kids, but there's something especially made for kids that the first act has. I don't think the humor lands, I don't think it translates well to adults. It's just not a good first act, but once the story actually gets going, I'm just completely engaged with the movie from that point forward. And it doesn't just become good, it becomes freaking fantastic. The voice cast is a bit of a mixed bag to me. Uh, Jason Schwartzman, I think, is really good in this movie. Even though he does remind me of Emperor Cusco just in the way he talks. But he does a good job. J.K. Simmons is also really good. J.K. Simmons, like, he can be tough and intimidating when he needs to. But when he wants to be this nice guy who just gives off a nice warmth. He sells you on that dude too. Uh, Rashida Jones is fine in the movie. She doesn't have a lot to do. Uh, but there's two voice actors who I don't want to say did a bad job, but whose voices just never matched the characters. And that's Joan Cusack, who is a talented actress, but man, her voice just did not match her villain. Like her villain looked like Yzma, but you got the voice of Jesse from Toy Story. And it just... It, it, I, I never, it, it took me out of the movie constantly. Every time she spoke, it took me out of the movie. And same with Norm MacDonald, who I absolutely adored. That guy was just fantastic. I loved him. And he does a fine job in this movie, but his voice just doesn't match how his character looks. And every time I heard him speak, I didn't hear his character, I just heard Norm MacDonald. So I wish he did a bit more voice acting there. But the voice, the rest of the voice cast does a fine job. Uh, this movie also has lots of modern music in it. And whenever it plays, it just feels totally off from the rest of the movie. Like when this movie relies on the musical score, it just works. But whenever the movie has a modern hip soundtrack, it takes me right out of it. Like there's a part where he's getting ready for the day and that song that goes like, how do you like me now? That was in Horrible Bosses plays and you're just like, ah, oh, it doesn't fit. And it doesn't even feel like it belongs in this movie. The setting, the time, the tone, just nothing about it works. But once again, the emotional highs of this story really do work and I do love the character arc of Jasper. You do buy the, the character beats as he progresses throughout the story from this spoiled rich brat to genuinely wanting to make a difference. I, I, I did really care for this character by, by the end and to see the difference that Jasper and Klaus were having on this village where the two families were at war all the time, it, it really worked. It, 
it just had that sense of awe and wonder behind it. You know, to watch these kids who used to fight each other and hate each other to getting along and playing games together, this movie just has a nice warm feeling to it. There's not much else I can say about this movie, but I do like stories of someone who inspires change even though he didn't mean to. And I think this movie is genuinely moving and heartfelt. I really cared for Jasper's relationship with Mr. Klaus. Yeah, the first act is pretty bad. And yes, the modern music doesn't work at all. And yes, the voice cast is very hit or miss. But when this movie is hitting its highs, the highs are so very high that I can't help but really like this movie. So I'm going to go ahead and give Klaus a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Klaus? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon. And Gavin, 